morning on this beautiful spring day. Uh, we're up at the top end of the Valdivie Bio Corridor and I'd like to talk a little bit about the plants we get in this area and particular, uh, in particular the wildflowers. A lot of people are aware that we are in the middle of the Cape Floral Kingdom which of course is designated as a World Heritage Site. Now the reasoning behind that is very simple, it's incredibly biodiverse. One of those vegetation types, of course, is the so-called feinbos, which is a generic term which covers pretty much any area with fine-leaved plants. But in real terms, feinbos is made up of a number of different vegetation types. Everybody knows proteas. If the dominating plant species are proteas, that is proteaceous feinbos. If it is ericas, that is ericaceous feinbos. If it is restios, that is restoid feinbos. And if it's grass, it's grassy feinbos. So the term feinbos is actually very limiting. Now, Ronosterfeld is a part of the Cape Floral Kingdom. It's also one of the most incredibly diverse parts. Now, I say that because the Cape Floral Kingdom overall has got around about 9,000 species of plants. And I say around about because we still don't know how many there are. They're finding new species all the time. So the Feinbos, or the Rhinosterfeld, sorry, that we're standing in is Swartland Alluvium Rhinosterfeld, of which 95% has disappeared. So this is incredibly important. The bio corridor is designed not only to conserve that, but also as a recreational area. Now a lot of people look at Rhinosterfeld and they just see dry, scrubby things, plants. But if you look deeper into it, you'll see that there's an incredible diversity of flowering plants here. Everybody's aware of the West Coast plants, those flushes of daisies and what have you. But here it's a lot more specialized. They're mostly geophytes. They come out in the spring, this time of the year. And what we'll do is we'll move around, take some photographs, and then show you how much is actually here. One of our first stops, because everybody is very keen on proteas, is our local protea. This is Protea burchellii, named after William Burchell, who was an early um, English naturalist who came through this area back in the 1700s. This is commonly referred to as virtual sugar bush. Sugar bush because all the sugar bushes have got a very high nectar count. And basically the early pioneers and early farmers realized that if you actually shake out the nectar, you could boil it down to sugar. If we go over to this one here, this is Saphia, Saphia volubus. And interestingly, you get it in white and this light purple. Underground, there's a big tuber. And that tuber, if you eat it raw, tastes like raw potato, and if you cook it, tastes like cooked potato. This was the staple diet of the, um, the original inhabitants of the area, which were the Bushmen and the Hottentots, or Khoi and San. And very high in starch, so like Europeans uh, made the potato their staple diet, so they made this guy. Okay, I mentioned one of the threats to our indigenous vegetation is things like agriculture and what have you, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. We do have a number of alien species. Now the pines, those were from the forestry days when all this was a pine plantation. But unfortunately, humans have moved plants across the planet and sometimes they escape from captivity and they become problematic. If I just go down a little bit, you've got some beautiful Cape weed here. And it was called Cape weed because farmers saw it as a weed, but it's actually an indigenous daisy. But look here, this little guy bought in for its oil seed. It's uh, basically canola or rape and it escaped and is taking over disturbed areas. This guy here with the beautiful purple flower. This is commonly referred to as Patterson's Curse or Ischium. This was bought in as a garden plant. 
but it's so prolific and it has no natural enemies out here that it's completely out of hand taking open over a lot of areas of the uh, Western Cape but they are combating it so even garden plants can become problematic to most gardeners weeds are a plant out of concept so to a farmer a sunflower would be a weed in a maize field I don't although they're called Cape weed I don't see these as weeds they're pioneer plants they're building the soil for further uh, development of the vegetation types here remember like in a garden everything has got to evolve and develop so it is with our rehabilitation efforts here it's going to be a slow process but we'll get there we're already seeing a massive difference we're reducing the number of aliens the pine trees will stay until they die of natural causes but we're finding more and more of the indigenous plants coming to the fore and that's awesome okay, we've moved down into the middle of the bio corridor and if you look around you'll see it's a very different vegetation type and it's dominated by restios these little reeds they're not grasses they are true reeds a lot of people know the cape thatching reed which is used for thatching hence the name but these are the local species so if you have a look very different vegetation type restios and in between you'll also get the the small guys uh, gladioli uh, the ixias um, things like that it's always well worth when you're out in the uh, felt looking take it slow and take it low the little guys are often missed don't only look at the big proteas and that sort of thing all these little plants they're all as important as the big guys I'm hoping that this video will show you the incredible biodiversity in the corridor that we're trying to protect and this is just the plants never mind all the little animals the insects things like that if you enjoyed the video please give it a like if you want to leave a comment please feel free to do that